Well, that took a turn for the worst. Uh, this video was supposed to be just like a drive in, drive out, boom, wheels, edit, sick, right? April 19th, and uh, still snow on the ground. Not much we can do about it because we can't control the weather. So we're gonna make the best of it. Um, I got some flat fender flares that need to be painted. So it is time to start prepping them for paint. I've done paint in the past. I've painted a fiberglass tonneau cover that was on my 97 Chevy. Uh, there was a bunch of hail damage on it. Did all the bondo, did a bunch of body work, ended up painting them or painting it. Came out pretty good. Uh, I was satisfied with it. So I think I can do some fender flares. That being said, they're gonna be very intricate and it's gonna be kind of hard to get them all sanded because they got kind of a texture on it. I'll show you down uh, doing it in the basement because cold out. So I don't want to be outside. No one wants to be outside. It's gross. So let's get into doing some body work. This video just became a little bit longer. All right, so here's the setup we got. We got some saw horses here. We've got some tables. We got the flares themselves. Now, I never shared how or where I got these from. I got these strictly from Amazon. I ended up going, oh, here comes the dog. What's up, big guy? I got these from Amazon and uh, they were literally 200 bucks. I have gone to Tiger Automotive here in town and bought, purchased a set. I brought them home, marked them up, and they were just coming off way too much off the vehicle that I wanted. I wanted something more slick, discreet, more OEM looking. And you honestly cannot find OEM flares for uh, 08 or third gen style Rams anywhere. So I literally ordered these off Amazon. They don't fit perfect, but they're gonna work. They're 200 bucks, so I figured why not risk it and try and make them work. But when it did come to, when it came to how much it was gonna cost to get them painted, I was quoted 700 bucks to paint them. And I figured putting a $700 paint job on $200 flares doesn't make a lot of sense. So I figured that, you know, I'll be able to do this myself and uh, honestly make content on it because, you know, that's what I like to do. I like to make videos and show how I can make stuff happen. We're going to unwrap these, start on one. Uh, I got a bunch of sandpaper here from my last painting project. So we got 80. doesn't look like I have any more left of that. Got 220. What's this? Oh, here's some 80. Uh, 120 and then 400 to finish her off. So we'll go 80, 120, 220, and then 400. Um, that's what we'll do just to get these uh, prepped. Uh, I'll unwrap one and I'll show you guys what the texture is and what we're trying to get down to being smooth. And this is what we're working with. So, like I said, like they're from Amazon. They're nothing crazy or nothing cool. Like they're pretty, uh, pretty slim, like. They're not gonna come too far off the body, which uh, I like. But for the rears, the only issue is, is I'm gonna end up cutting the fenders out because I don't want any of the rust sitting underneath there because just letting it sit is just obviously gonna make it worse. It's obviously, it's a lost cause at this point. It's gonna end up rusting out eventually, but this might be a way you know, to prevent it, slow it down a little bit, probably not, but it's worth a shot, I find. Um, as you see, like there's these little connectors here. That's how I have a bunch of hardware up in my room. Uh, that's where all of uh, these flares are going to be connected. But I'm also going to get the uh, gasket seal kit that you can get. Basically, just kind of wraps around, makes this mend better to the body of the truck. And then also has a 3M tape, which uh, uh, you peel off, and then you know, we got the top half sticking to the truck. And then, but with these tabs here, when I cut the fenders on the rear, uh, these tabs are gonna have nothing to connect to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Luke to pull out his welding skills and weld a couple tabs off of the f inside of the fender to, oh, tight of the fender to the flare so that it has something strong to hold onto and, uh, you know, will be able to withstand some, you know, vibrations and stuff like that and not just be too flimsy. Uh, but yeah, as you see, like this, the texture, it's kind of like, um, I don't even know what to say. It's just kind of like your standard, like, 
almost like my door handles on my truck. Like there's just not, it doesn't look good in my opinion. And if I were to slap these on like this, yeah, it would look fine, but it would just kind of look cheap and half done to me. So that's why we're gonna end up painting these and making them look a lot nicer than what they are currently. Here's a little update. Got one completed. It's looking decently smooth. It's not too bad. Took, uh, I don't even know what time it is, so took a decent amount of time. Working on this one, start with the smaller pieces before I get into the big pieces. Start, I tried uh, like s starting with 60 grit, and then I thought maybe I didn't need the whole 60 grit, maybe I could start at like 120, or sorry, not 60, 80. I thought maybe I could start at like 120. Um, definitely not the case, gonna have to start with 80 all the way around, um, just because it does give end up giving that smoother finish. Uh, super, super fine, um, but it's more of a sponge anyways. We uh, just put water on it and then uh, wet sanding a little bit there at the end. And to get the ultimate like smooth, smooth finish that I'm, that I'd be okay with painting on. Basically the whole process, gonna have to do this with all four. It's gonna take a lot long, it's gonna be a long day of, uh, it's gonna be a long day of sanding. But it's kind of gross how much black stuff comes off, but it doesn't make a good big dust, which is kind of nice. Anyways, we're gonna hop back on and uh, get going on this one and uh, hopefully be able to crank out all four today. That'd be ideal. So as you can see, we're continuing this video and there's no more snow on the ground. It's all nice and green. It's a nice summer day in May. So we got the flares out here. We're out at my grandparents here today. We got the flares sitting out. And uh, today is paint day. Uh, I think I'm only gonna do the primer today. And then, uh, cause I'm still waiting on the call that my actual paint is ready. What you what has been done in the, some t in the time past is everything's been sanded. I literally just did a nice light scuff on them uh, just to make sure that the uh, primer has something to, to bond to. Um, I went through all the steps of, I think I went 80 to 120 to 240 to 400 and then, uh, did a little bit of wet sanding on these as well. Uh, now I'm just gonna end up wiping them all down with some solvent just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Then we'll be able to put the primer on. This primer is just a regular old Rust-Oleum. It's bronze to plastic. I'm not doing anything crazy with the primer. Cause, cause years back when I did uh, my fiberglass tonneau cover, I just used primer out of a can and then put all the paint over top of it and it worked just great. But yeah, anyways, I just did a light scuff on all the flares. Uh, we're gonna now wipe them all down, make sure they're nice and clean. Um, we're out here, it's kind of it's kind of sunny, kind of cloudy today, so it's not too warm. Um, definitely gonna, you know, try and get the best paint on here as quick as possible because I think it's supposed to rain tonight. Uh, from there, then I'm thinking I'm gonna let them dry over at least a couple days. Uh, I don't work again in, on Thursday, so I'll be able to come out here and paint them if as long as it's not raining. Um, but I don't know. We'll see how long this all takes. Maybe. Even this evening I'll come out here if the paint's ready to paint them and uh, yeah and then soon enough we'll be able to throw these on the truck and uh, that whole rust issue problem will be hidden not fixed hidden so this video is obviously seen three different parts we're at the painting stage again and the last part you just saw I tried priming them wasn't working uh, didn't sand them good enough, so I went back to the drawing board, sand them all again, and uh, this is where we're at. So now I'm kind of getting impatient, but good things come with time. And I'm literally just gonna do the best I can. I really don't care at this point. I'm painting them, priming them, painting them. That's how it is, because I'm not spending three million years on these $200 flares, whatever. It's at the end of the day, whatever, I come up with or whatever I create is what's gonna work and it's gonna be better than looking at us. So anyways, we're gonna paint these and uh, yeah, this will, let's get at it. We've done two flares, time has gone by. This is where we're looking. 
These are the rears. Don't look too close. You can see all those little divots. That's from where the primer was. Whoop to do just like that. So I'm gonna start this off with saying I am not a professional, nor was I expecting a professional result. But but I feel like I did not bad. You know, obviously you can see all those little dump bumps. I knew that was all gonna be in there because I was sanding it and I just like I messed up. If I would have sanded it all properly, it wouldn't have been bad. It would have been, you know. Like that, I like guess she would have been pretty decent, but obviously my mistake, I knew what was wrong. I decided to proceed with it because I knew that I wasn't going to be too upset about it because this, again, this isn't a show truck. This is just a daily driver and this is literally to cover up an already hideous imperfection. So a little, but little imperfections on here. I'm not too worried about it and I'm pretty like, this is just as it is right now. Hopefully it dries uh, just as good. Um, we're still kind of airing out the shop. I just tried to shut the doors as soon, quick as possible so that there wouldn't be as much um, debris and like, I don't know, flies and stuff. There's still some in here, so I'm gonna definitely take some time to kill all of them off before I leave because I do not want to come back to uh, a fly or a mosquito stuck in my paint. Just like right there, you can see a little divot literally as i'm about to do the second coat i look and there's a mosquito just trying to get its way out of there i grabbed it like by the wings and pull it out but the leg's still stuck in there so i had a little knife and i was like literally picking uh the feet and the legs out uh little by little just so that uh i need to just hopefully keep them looking this well uh so that they drive completely perfectly as perfect as they're gonna be. So that uh, then I have flares that I can put on the truck and they're not gonna be like that gray, black textured stuff. This is my second time painting. I did paint a tunnel cover in this exact shop. Uh, did not, honestly didn't turn out as smooth as this. Like, like the paint itself actually laid really nicely. It's just the little bumps that I didn't take the time to fix and whatnot. That's still what's making it look not as good. My tonic cover was very orange peely, but that's because I didn't really take the time to like learn how to use the gun and properly set it up. I actually took the time and set up the gun properly. Uh, again, it's not an expensive gun. It's literally from Princess Auto. This is this is the gun I used. It was literally just like a fifteen dollar paint gun. It comes with a uh, air pressure regulator, and you know, obviously I have the tip off of it. But just finished cleaning it. This is where we're at right now. The Flares are painted and hopefully they stay painted nicely, as nice as they are can be. So that I can put them on the truck and the truck will then no longer have rust on the rear fenders. We can go look at that right now. So, so obviously this is what we are covering up. <laughs> it's pretty bad, but this side's honestly the good side um because it hasn't yet chipped the paint off it's just bubbling we come on over to this side and this is where it gets real bad i've been just literally touching up with a paint pen um again also behind the mud flaps is a big issue so this is all gonna get covered i'm planning on cutting all of this out so that uh, we don't have rust underneath hopefully that'll help slow down the rust process i'm also going to hit it with um this rust inhibitor i've used it right on here and it's actually worked really well obviously you know rust is just gonna go and it's not gonna wait for anybody it's it's literally once it started it started it's not going away so what i plan is to cut it out and just f all those extra edges and stuff that's still uh exposed i'm gonna um cover that all in this rust inhibitor and then i'm gonna hit it with a um rock guard uh I can't like this box liner kind of stuff. Something I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna end up box lining all the bottom of here because it's still, my rockers are still in good shapes, but I wanna keep them in good shape. So I'm going to 
take the uh, chance to just put like a two inch, one inch strip of rocker guard on the bottom of my rockers, just so that uh, they will help uh, with lifetime span. Overall, I'm really happy with how this kind of turned out. Um, obviously, you know, I still gotta let this cure for a couple days here and uh, then, then I'm really gonna know what it looks like, but hopefully, you know, this all turns out as good as it's looking right now. But yeah, with that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's nothing crazy. It's just literally becoming, this channel's becoming half-ass garage. It's just like me and Luke just doing half-ass work just so that we can, you know, make things work for us. So. We're not too particular with how fine detail things are because we do live in Saskatchewan and things just get wrecked just because of the weather. But uh, yeah, I think this is gonna look sweet and it's gonna, you know, help with the appearance of the truck. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, it really helps us out. And it motivates us to make more videos like this. Just, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but we're just doing stuff. And maybe it helps motivate you to, you know, try things on your own because this is something that's kind of a daunting task, you know, learning how to paint isn't isn't an easy thing to do, but it's, you know, it's achievable by just like you're a kid like me that's just trying to, you know, save some money. That will conclude today's video. Uh, hope you guys like it. Don't forget, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. It's black underscore five seven underscore. Uh, that's pretty, pretty simple. It's uh, just me posting my truck all the time, make a lot of reels, stuff like that. And then there's Luke's car Instagram. It's called It's a Toaster. It's you literally click on our channel and it's up at the top there. You'll be able to see it. See you guys in the next video. This is the first one. Season three is finally going. We've had. I still have two videos right now sitting uh, to be posted, but this one will be posted now because it's been too long. But anyways, peace out, guys. See you guys in the next one.